All right, welcome back to the All Valley Sunday Night Trivia Championship Week 2. And I am Peter. And I am Brianna. And today's special guest, you guys, Israel Warbe, who I call Uncle Izzy, who plays Freddy Fernandez. How are you doing, Izzy? <laughs> hey, I'm doing great. I'm here in Vermont outside with my MacBook Pro looking at the screen ready for this game. Ready to join Peter and Brianna and have some good fun with all the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai fans. I'm ready, guys. And I have a special treat for you. So, Peter, let them know what's happening. The all winner right. Of this game. But- all right. Yeah. So today's champion. So the, the last person standing will win a Macon Bacon T-shirt worn by Freddie Fernandez in the first movie. The Making Bacon T-shirt, man. <laughs> the T-shirt, yes, that John Appleton let me wear. Bless you, John. <laughs> yes. And for those that want to hear uh, more of that story, you know, uh, Uncle Izzy here joined us on the on, on the on the podcast, and uh, eventually we're gonna put that up on the YouTube channel. But it is available on audio form. Um, yeah, but but Izzy, how are you doing? You said you're in Vermont. Uh, are you you're vacationing right now? Yes, um, I'm here in Vermont. My girlfriend's sister lives here in a town called St. Johnsbury, Vermont. It's close to the border of Canada, so it's like five and a half hours away from New York. So every year we come here about ten times, man. We get away from the city, especially during this horrid time of this COVID. You know, I, I, uh, my family and I, we pack up, we bring our little dog Cooper and we come here and we enjoy it. It's so beautiful out here. And I'm out. I decided to do this outside because why not? Why oh, not yeah. be inside? Perfect. Yes. Only the mosquitoes are getting me to those damn, <laughs> damn bugs. You gotta but, be careful with those too. Yeah, you gotta watch out for encephalitis in West Nile. Oh, great. Oh, oh God. Oh God. I'm horrid now. It's horrid. Oh, and I gotta watch out for the bears. I gotta keep looking back. There's bears around here, so I gotta be cool. <laughs> oh I gotta, no! I gotta keep back. <laughs> so if and, you scream and run, we should just assume you got eaten by a bear and keep going. Absolutely no. I got my little schnoodle, my poodle schnauzer dog. He's gonna protect me. Don't worry. You gotta. We got a shepherd here too. Okay. All right, we do have a question. Someone's asking if it's the actual T-shirt you wore in the movie. It's oh, a comp- no. It's no, a version that, of it. No, that, uh, I, that's nowhere to be found. I don't know. That was 35 years ago. I think some moths got to it. Um, I, they kept it. So I have no idea where that T-shirt is. Um, and if somebody does know, please let me know. Uh, that would be a question for Peter's friend, the costume designer, probably. Uh, I can try to find out, but okay, sure. Let, let's not bug him again. We did that last <laughs> yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, live, yeah. Uh, no, and, I got copy, copy, copy. Right, right. And, and for those that want to see a picture of where Izzy is right now, I did drop a uh, link to the Twitter post in the chat room. So if you guys scroll up, uh, look for um, the link that I shared. And speaking of links, I also shared uh, Izzy's Etsy uh, site that has the other t or the t-shirts and also his strategies. So, uh, Izzy, for those that don't know, can you talk about your strategies? Yes, my strategy is a little novelty item for birthdays, weddings, holidays, any event you could think of. It's even really cool for um, to promote your company or whatever. It's a little clip that clips onto any size straw. It doesn't matter whether it's plastic, paper, metal. It fits any size straw. And then that whole thing clips onto a glass. It's really cool. And uh, it was a little slow now because of the COVID. Nobody should be throwing parties. So I haven't been advertising lately, but I'm going to start up soon because I think hopefully by the grace of God that we get rid of this COVID sooner than later and um it's but it's a cool product i'm very patient with it it's gonna start selling and it's fun for the whole family man it's really cool if you want to personalize your strategies just send you know order them 
Um, there's five packs, 10 packs, 25 packs, 75 packs, 100 packs. Uh, the more you get, the cheaper it is. And for big events, small events, and we can place any photo that you send me on there with any message. Right. That's right. I, I have some uh, as well. Uh, for those that are in our group, I'll reshare those for some of our newer members. Um, so, so I don't know. We've got a few more minutes. The logos on them. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, I still have some that uh, actually there's a couple guys I need to mail those out to because we did that live stream and we were kind of doing like the uh, live uh, live pop quizzes kind of thing. So uh, I got to get those out there too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And uh, I love you. I love you anyway. Don't worry about it. Hey, love you, Aww, love you too. Izzy. We love you back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, thank you for coming on. I've been I've been waiting for this day since the very beginning. It's like, come on, when are we going to have Israel? When are we going to have Israel? Yeah, you got me. We got, you, got you. Anytime. <laughs> got you, you know, right. I I was even considering waiting until week seventeen to you know kind of coincide with the apartment seventeen. So. Oh man, I'll do seventeen too. Don't worry, I'll get something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll we'll see if we make it uh, to seventeen. Because honestly, we haven't discussed how much longer we're going to uh, continue doing this. But uh, on August 28th, uh, seasons one and two of Cobra Kai is coming to Netflix. So, you know, we don't know how long until season three gets released. But once things start amping up again, we may not have time to continue this trivia because we're just we're going to be busy with the podcast. Right. So we'll see. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. So, so. Hey, everybody, is everybody listening to me? Is that, I mean, can people hear me right now? Oh, yeah. They yes. sure can. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I'm sure they're like saying, damn, Israel's in a nice, beautiful place. I wish I was there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. For those that uh, can't hear Izzy, why don't you guys send some hearts in the chat room there? So. Oh, yes. Hey, yes, yes, Israel, we hear you. Yes, yeah. we hear oh, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Lots Give of them all it. the hearts. There it is. Oh, even if somebody said we are very jealous of where you are. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is that's that's Carrie. That's one of our moderators. Everybody watch out for the moderators. I know we've got Mike in tonight. I know we've got Carrie in tonight. Um, Amy's in there. Amy's in there. I haven't seen Marvin yet. Oh, Marvin's right there. Marvin's right where? There he is. Okay, yep. so there's all four. Um, watch out for those four. If you break the rules... They will sweep your leg, or maybe they will just tell you to stop breaking the rules. So, yep, but they're awesome. Listen to them. They know what to say. They know what to do. All right. Hey, yeah, check mods. this out. We got a guy I see up here. He says, hey, y'all. His name is Izzy D.F. Feeds. Izzy, what's up, Izzy? I'm Izzy, too. Uh, yep, that, that's, that's, that's Izzy McFeagle. She is um, one of our uh, companions. Nice. Yep. Nice. I like seeing Izzy up there. Yeah. Oh, she's also, what was it, at week two? No, week three. three. Oh, gosh. Week week three uh, champion? Week so. one was Mike. Week two was right. Carrie. Week three Carrie, was, right. was Kira. Izzy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so we got some. <laughs> we have champions here. Oh, right? we do. Yes. <laughs> um, I think and... we've got most of the returning champions in here right now. And here's something crazy too, Izzy. Uh, so this is week twelve. The all previous eleven champions, all different people too. Nice. Yeah. So a lot of people tuning in, and uh, all types of, uh, you know, variety of knowledge levels, I guess. So even the ones that won have gotten knocked out early on. So it's it's really uh, it's really something actually just to see somebody new every week win. So. We'll see if that streak hey, continues. I say, I, yeah, I got to say this. They're all winners because they're here. Yeah, you're yes. right. You're right. They're tuning in with you. <laughs> yep. They yeah. get to spend their evening with Israel Jouarbe. And how many people get to say that? That's right. <laughs> At the Thank moment, you, I appreciate it. 54 people. That was very sweet. That's it. <laughs> and Not we are the now. special ones. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so uh, recap the rules for everyone. Um, I don't think that um, – I, I know we've got a few new ones. 
Uh, shout out to Mikey from the Cobra Guys in here for the first time ever. So everyone be very nice to Mikey, but also remember that um, it's Mikey. No mercy. So <laughs> <laughs> um, don't go out of your way to be nice to Mikey, but don't be mean. Um, remember, uh, there have been a few changes this week that I was reading up on to the um, game program. The answers are not supposed to shift anymore. They said okay. that they've they've had too many complaints about that, and they fixed it so that um, the answers are not supposed to shift anymore. You still can't click early because you'll still register as a non-answer, but the good news is your screen should not move anymore. So if it still does, let me know because um, they're telling me it won't. So it's a, it's a, it's a whole new world out here okay. this week because they changed a whole bunch of stuff um, in All the right. last seven uh days. Our uh, week one champion wants to know if players can still come back to life. I did. <laughs> Owen, you missed no questions. Um, yep. So Owen no. Morgan's in the chat. And even if that, you had uh, missed them all, I don't know that I would say any of them were important. Um, so um, do not know whether or not dead players can still come back to life. We will have to find out if Mike practices his necromancy again this week um wait am i missing something is this like a zombie game they come back to life <laughs> <laughs> I'm to talk about. <laughs> there is a slight glitch with the game because it is a last man standing setup if uh -huh. if the people still remaining all answer a question incorrectly and one of the people that has already been eliminated answers it right, they come back to the leaderboard. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's almost like dodgeball. Yes, except huh. when we see them come back, we stop and we go to another, <laughs> we go to the sudden death round just to face off between the people that were legitimately still standing. So the necromancy is, <laughs> is um, a sign that we need to shift gears because everyone answered it wrong, and now we need to, you know, get down to the quick draw contest, I guess. Wow, it sounds like me playing Jeopardy. I'm always wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how those people do it, man. I feel so stupid when I watch Jeopardy, man. And, and my mother-in-law used to watch it, like, every day. She's, like, 84 years old, Spanish lady from Puerto Rico, and she gets more answers right than me. See, kudos. It, it sounds like you watched the entire episode. After a few questions of getting them wrong, I changed the channel. You know, I, I don't know yeah. if I can <laughs> continue feeling stupid. <laughs> no, I, I, I go back to the dummy games like uh, Family Feud, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Family Feud is highly entertaining. Steve Harvey is hilarious. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Well, I think if we're all set, uh, we can get started. Okay, Carrie is is we're going to believe ourselves all past question three this week. We're just going to think positive and hope that Bree didn't put something stupid on question three. I don't think she did, but then again, we'll mm -hmm. find out because we will find out. Yeah. I never think I do, but I am going to push the button. First question is a gimme. Um, as soon as it pops up, Israel will read the question and then the answers. I will start the question timer. No matter what you answer, you will advance. But, as always, it's an answer that you should all know. So, here we go. And, Israel, if you will ask just as soon as it shows up on your screen, and we'll get it underway. Okay, this is question number one. All right, get ready, guys. The first character we meet in The Karate Kid, outside of Daniel and, Lu and Lucille, is the young man who's gotten a gay kicked in his face. What is his name? Go ahead and read the answers, too. Yep. Oh, okay. A, Johnny Lawrence. B, Bobby Brown. C, Freddie Fernandez. Or D, Jerry Robertson. C, easy peasy. No one on the planet should miss this question. Uh, we've been surprised before. <laughs> 
And if we, if somebody, if they miss this question, I'm out. I'm out. All right. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm might leaving. Be our, might be yeah, our please. shortest game. I don't know. Right. Uh, the uh, host okay. bailed after the first question, but <laughs> everyone, everyone, 100 percent, 36 people know that's Freddie Fernandez. What yeah. is that? Karate? Yeah. Freddie Fernandez from Apartment 17, baby. <laughs> <laughs> With the Macon Bacon t-shirt, yeah, come and get them. I Somebody's still... going to win one for free today. I still cannot believe that that shirt got past the MPAA. I really cannot. I just, I love it. I I think it was under the radar. I swear to God, I think it was way too late. People didn't even notice it, didn't talk about it on the set or anything. And, uh, you know, John Avildsen really thought it was just funny. He was like, yeah, he, he just like, don't worry, just wear it. Yeah, no problem. I don't think he even looked at it carefully. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, I got away with it, man. It's crazy. I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. 38 players, 38 survivors. Everyone got through. There we go. Now everybody knows how to play the game that most of you have been playing for the last 12 weeks. And on we go to question number two for Peter. All right. Question number two. What does Dimitri call Mitch and Chris when they back Hawk up at the comic book store? Was it A, Rocksteady and Bebop, B, Dumb and Dumber, C, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, or D, Mary and Pippin? There's a couple of those that I could actually see Dimitri calling them. I mean, almost all of them, really. They're all very reasonable. Yeah. I feel Dimitri is pretty versed in pop culture with no... All of that. Right. Well, Tweedledee and Tweedledum may be more of a generational thing. You think so? I don't know. He called them Rocksteady and hey, Bebop. I... Mm-hmm. How come I didn't get the questions answered for me? Isn't there a side thing where I know the answers? But I don't want to... I'm already out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, going into it, since I'm the one that writes the questions, technically I'm the only one that knows the answers. Yeah. Oh, this I I don't know them old. either. Yeah. I often say that if I played this, I probably never would have won, ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Susan's here now too. They summoned Owen earlier. They they did the Owen 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 thing, and he appeared. Um. And and now Susan is in. So, oh, and there's Chris. We got Watch Party in. We got people jumping in all over the place today. Yeah. Oh, Susan. She's the one that plays the homeless lady on the on the Cobra Kai, right? That's her. Yes. That's her. Yeah. Oh, hello, Susan. And Owen, who plays Bert. Yep, one of the background Cobras. Oh. Yep, uh, and uh, fan favorite. Hey, Bert. Uh, now... The uh, I'm season shout out to everybody. I'm so happy. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Well, speaking of shout out, I mean, uh, Freddie Fernandez gets a shout out in season two. You know, the the meat packing freezer. We're just nice. not going to ignore that that was a freaking question, Peter. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just tighten up, tighten that up, man. Button it up. <laughs> See, this is where me but being the only one who knows the questions bites me in the butt. Go way ahead, yeah. way ahead, Peter. Yes. See, we, we, we've had uh, we, we've had even like our moderators will drop something in the chat room, and then it'll end up being a question too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone just everyone just you know forget that Peter said anything and pretend yep. that okay yeah all right yep here we go going on question three this one is for me as soon as it appears. And where does Mr. Miyagi tell Daniel he needs to focus all of his power for a punch? Is it the outside of his hand, in his wrist, the one inch between his first two knuckles, or his shoulder? Where does Mr. Miyagi tell Daniel all of the power of a punch is, or is supposed to be? This one's easy, huh? Question three? Yeah. <laughs> um, it absolutely should be. It absolutely should be. I'm not going to lie. This particular scene, it's just beautifully shot. I'm always looking around 
in the scene. I don't know. I, I need to pay attention to the dialogue a lot more. Mr. Miyagi says like six times one inch while tapping his, his knuckles. Yeah, I know. You, I wow, mean, I learned something today. See? <laughs> I you learned and I both. Today. You and I both. <laughs> oh, my goodness. In, Uh-oh. On the Lower East Side where I grew up, all the focus power was in the brass knuckles. <laughs> Oh, well, see that now you would you would take that and you would apply it to this and you would say knuckles, there's the answer, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> if you put it on the outside of your hand, you're going to break your finger. I mean, yeah. it just We already eliminated 16 people. Yeah, see? Told you. Wow. Between the two questions. I was Wow, you're tough. Uh, you're tough. I told you. I'm going to do it. I regret it. I regret it. You have to. I have to. Seven's the magic number, so 16's way double that. Well, it was it was eight on the first one, two of which were timeouts, and it was eight on this one. And uh, one yeah, of them. said there's five is left, so that's good. That's yeah, very 22, optimistic. Yeah, yeah 22, 22 still going. Um, I mean, it, 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 it's just one inch, one inch. One, and he's tapping Daniel's knuckles the whole time. Concentrate all the power in your body. One inch right here. It, come on. Yeah, but maybe it was the accent. Maybe it, Brianna, was, the accent. it was the accent. <laughs> Brianna, you, you, you act surprised. A lot of people got eliminated for not even knowing the September, right, at the very beginning of the movie. 41 people got eliminated for not realizing the very first screen of The Karate Kid says September, yes. Right. Oh, wow. So, yeah, Out shouldn't be too. surprised. Yeah. Man, can we just skip question three? Can that come become like our 13th floor? Well, I have thrown it out there to have me look over the question so I can say, hey, this is probably harder than you think. Something like that. You try getting a hold of you. Well, yeah, I, I, it's easier than you think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, guys, get your stuff together. Right? <laughs> and no bickering. We're live. Okay. Yes. Moving yes. on. All Question right. four. This is Back for Izzy. Izzy again. As soon as it appears for you, go ahead and ask. Okay. Question number four to the 22 survivors is, Johnny grew up in Encino, California, but where does he live now? Ooh. You read the answers. Oh, A, Beverly <laughs> Hills, B, Malibu, C, Encino, or D, Reseda. Maybe I should have put this one on question three, because on this one, I literally put the answer in the screenshot. And I never do that. I go out of my way to avoid doing that. Hmm. On this one, I did that. Is everyone locked in their answers? Yes, we are ready to go. And the correct answer is... Reseda. Reseda. Now, Beverly Hills, was that a slight nod to Beverly Hills Cop? Um, no, they are all just oh. literally places in California. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that aren't far from um, the Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley Metroplex. Got it. That was literally hey, I all have it a, was. I have a little cool story to tell you. Okay. If we have time for that real quick. Always. Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, so so I was editing at A and E, okay, for four years when I first got here to New York. That's why I came to New York because A and E hired me to edit. So so some of my job was to like fix old shows from A and E and kind of up update them, you know. So one of the shows at the time was Bio Biography. Remember that show? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so. Every time they put a star that was featured years ago, they put him on now and then they update the movies that he's done and all that and some trivia stuff at the end. So I forgot that I, and I'm doing Eddie Murphy. So one of the scenes that I'm cutting that we were considering cutting out was my scene when I put <laughs> the bananas in the t Right. So I'm like, oh shit, I'm in this biography? Are you kidding? I never knew. I'm supposed to get paid for this. So I'm like talking to the producer saying, hey, that's me. And she goes, that's you? I go, yeah. I was an actor. <laughs> and 
I said I should be getting some money for this, man. So I called up SAG and I said, hey, man, all right, I'm here working at a and and I just saw myself in the scene with Eddie Murphy and Beverly Hills Cop, and it's on biography. So I'm here telling on A&E to pay me, right, when I'm working for them. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Did and they? I got paid. Okay. That, there, well, you there you go. go. It worked. Yeah. That's the important thing. They owed you the money. That's, they needed to put. They needed to pony up. That's all. That's right. And everybody was like chilling. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> that's a great story. Yeah. Oh, Mike just said that too. Great story. Uh, that that really is. I mean, if anyone else had been editing that together, would you have ever gotten paid? Huh? Right. I say, if anyone else had been editing that, would you have ever gotten paid for it? I, I, they're supposed to be watchdogs, so I usually get paid for stuff that I did like 30 years ago, like Hill Street Blues, and I get like 36 cent checks. It's funny. <laughs> the old stuff. Right. It's funny. You get checks like one cent. It costs more to send the postage. Wow. Well, at least they're following you know? the rules, though. Yeah. Yeah. They do. They're pretty good at it. All right. Everyone knew that Johnny now lives in Reseda. Mm, you're right. Maybe that should have been question three. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So still 22 survivors. We are going to move on to question five for Peter. And just real quick, I think Mikey uh, missed the previous question or something because they just tweeted it out that they need to. Sounds like they need to rewatch Karate Kid. Wait, is he the but? Well, no, he had to go out. He had to be one of the eight that went out before because nobody went out on that one. It was 22 and 22. Stayed the same. Well, right. That, But the last question was Cobra Kai. The one before that was Karate Kid. Oh, yeah, because so, they bounced yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Question five. What pretense does Terry Silver have for being in Mr. Miyagi's backyard after Mike Barnes showed up there? A, bringing Daniel a gi. B, bringing Mr. Miyagi a formal apology from his teacher. C, followed Mike there to protect Daniel, or D, giving Daniel a book. And pay particular attention to the wording. And the, the screenshot, because it's that particular scene. And he lies a couple different times. And the correct answer is giving Daniel a book. Right. Because um, oh. that's how Daniel learns karate. Yes. Well, no. <laughs> no, he doesn't learn from book. But, all right, we did lose three on that one. Nah. He did not bring Daniel a gee there. He did not nope. follow Mike there to protect Daniel. Could be assumed he followed Mike there, but it wasn't to protect Daniel. They probably drove together. Right. And he did bring Mr. Miyagi an informal apology from his teacher, but not in that scene. Right. Yeah. That's the, it was the scene where Miyagi and Daniel are doing kata. That's when he comes with the apology. Yes. And it was not a formal one. It was just the, he sends his apologies as well. It was nothing yeah. written down or anything like that. That one was meant to be tricky. Only got three of you. So. Not bad. If I try to be nice, ah. I mess everyone up. If I try to be an asshole, everybody gets it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should try to be an asshole more often. That's my motto. Clap. 19. Moving on to question six. This one is mine. Where do we first meet Eli Moskowitz? Is it at the Reseda Flats Mini Mart, the school cafeteria, the Reseda Heights parking lot, or the Encino Oaks Country Club? Where are we when we meet Eli Moskowitz for the first time? And he's so cute, and he's so sweet, and he's so shy, and he's such a wonderful little best boy, and I miss him so much. Yep. Uh, first introduced in the second episode. Yes, at the school cafeteria. School cafeteria. Um, I can't think of anyone other than Nestor that we actually meet at the mini, well, Kyler. Oh, well, Kyler. Um, yeah. Was Rory one of them? I mean, Brooks for sure. Yeah, Kyler, Brooks, Rory. Um, and I think there was another one with them whose name we don't know. Um, and then Reseda Heights parking lot is where we met Miguel. 
in Cedar Oaks Country Club is where we met Amanda and Anthony. So. All right. Only one person out on that one. But everyone answered correctly, so I'm not quite sure where number 19 went. Uh, time hmm. out, possibly. That could be. Yep. All right. So 18 survivors. Moving on to question seven for Israel. Yes. 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 Okay. I was getting lonely out here. Oh, no. Jump in anytime. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. I got so many damn bugs that's keeping me company right now. There you go. <laughs> just as long as they're not mosquitoes. That some of them are. <laughs> okay, here we go. Question number seven. Fill in the blank to complete this quote. You sure pick blank people to be friends with you, Freddie. A, stupid. B, loser. Three, cool. D, awesome. This would normally be where I would play the video answer. However, apparently Adobe Premiere has updated and no longer wants to import video of any kind. And I did not know that until 10 minutes before we went on the air. Oh. So <laughs> I couldn't fix it. Uh, oh, but that, that picture is my favorite photo in the damn movie. Oh, I look so handsome. <laughs> you do. I agree. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> looked really, really <laughs> good on the beach. <laughs> That, that should be, uh, if it isn't already, that should be one of your pictures that you sign when uh, you do autographs. You know, I have a close-up of that that I do send out, yeah. Ah, there you go, okay. I should I should add, I should add the other guy. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, if the focus is you and people getting your autograph. Yeah. You know. You look really good in yellow, and I will say that the hair is amazing. <laughs> you just see my hair now. <laughs> <laughs> we saw it in the picture. Hey, at least I have hair. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, you're right. No, it, it, yeah. Izzy, it, quick question. Uh, we had Daryl Vidal on here, uh, and he talked about um, something that like nobody knew, because he's only shared it on the podcast. But uh, many people did not know that he was actually on the beach that day as well in the movie. Do, do you remember interacting with him uh, during that day of shooting? With, with who, though? Daryl Vidal. Daryl, yeah. Daryl, yes. Yes. There... As a matter of fact, um, oh, my God, I got to send the shirt to his wife, April. Oh, my God, I got to send it. I keep forgetting, and I'm out oh. here, and I'm having fun. He's like... Send me the damn shirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I got two of them. So, April, if you hear this podcast, I'm sending it out tomorrow, I promise. But, yes, yeah. yes, Darrow is a very cool, very nice guy, man. Yeah. And, uh, uh, April, April played the week that he was guest host. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't know how far she made it, though, but she was playing alongside as he was hosting. Nice, nice. I'm going to I'm gonna text her tonight on Messenger, and she's a really sweet lady. Oh, my God. She was cooking while I messenger, uh, was messaging with her, and we went on live, so me and my girlfriend were talking to her, and she was in the kitchen, and she was cooking, and Daryl had, you know, was out. So um, we're going to do some cool things together. She's going to promote me, and I'm going to promote Daryl. Oh, nice. Awesome. Now, yeah. I, I think it's yeah. interesting that Daryl was um, in in one scene, you know, throwing a football to nobody while you guys are playing soccer, but we don't we don't see him, like, around the campfire or anything like that. So I thought that was kind of interesting that he happened to be there, but not in any of the scenes. Oh, no, no. You know what? Let me tell you. Um, um I, we did some scenes that they cut out of the movie, and they never like did uh, a, a, a re-editing of the movie and like kind of add the scenes in. They did. Some, I, I think I got a special edition copy, but we did more scenes. But I don't remember if we interacted with Daryl. I mean, I interacted with him as far as like conversation in between movie, you know, in real life. Right. Right. But. Remember, if he was in those scenes that they had cut out, and the scenes that they had cut out were 
um, improvised, right? We were like sitting around like a campfire and we were smoking marijuana in the scene. <laughs> you know, they had yeah, yeah, to yeah. cut. What they did, what Janet Appleton did was like, hey, I'm not going to put any marijuana scenes in this movie. It's some, too good to mess it up with like some negative undertones. You know what I mean? So, and, and the scenes were funny. It's not like we were focused on that. You know what right. I mean? The right. scenes were focused on, you know, on like meeting, getting to know each other, and we were talking stuff, you know. And I, I think that was a very good move, you know, to do that because that, that was pretty silly, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and the movie was so good that they didn't need stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, oh, but they so I, have know, a rather prominent pot scene that they did leave in. Yeah, you, you know what, though, Bri- Brianna, like uh, that, that's come up before, oh, yeah. and like oh, as a kid, a I had no party. party. Yeah, John, Johnny's rolling up a little joint, but even as a kid, I had no idea what was going on. I so. thought he was rolling a cigarette till I was a teenager. Yeah. I, I think just the fact that he doesn't light it up or anything. He's only rolling it up. So that's probably, yeah. you know, kind of towing the line there. And and you know what? It was appropriate for his character, right? Because he's like the bad guy, right? So right. it makes sense rolling a joint with the, the skeleton outfit. It kind of was a beautiful choice to leave that one in as opposed to, you know, leaving us and, and you know, and, and, and uh, Daniel, like, smoking weed you know that, i was gonna scene. ask was daniel part of this scene <laughs> was A daniel, daniel part, smoking yeah. pot yes yes we, well, yeah we're all like yeah but i don't think he took any weed i don't think he did i mean listen this was 35 years ago so i don't remember everything but it was a really cool scene and we just improvising right and they cut it out but i think what they did was leave some of the shots in there without the weed. So like when it was starting to get night, so as a kind of a time lapse type of scene. Right. You know? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I so, see. You know what though? All right, so let's take on, let's them eliminate these people. Let's yes, go. let's let's, let's, let's go. keep going. The answer is cool and normally like I said it would have a video um but don't. So Cool. Yeah. They said that he picked really cool people to be friends with, Freddie. And five people did not know that. Um, and I just go on a... Disappointed, uh, uh, I'm really disappointed. <laughs> yeah, watch I have the to... movie, Watch the movie. <laughs> watch watch the, movie. the movie. You can catch it on any channel, everywhere, anytime. Oh, my God, and yes. any country. <clears throat> yes. That's, that, that's true, actually, at the moment. It, it is available on Netflix, at least for the uh, end of the month, the remainder of the month. A&E loves it. TBS oh, this- loves it. Play it all the time. Yeah. Hey, listen, I got something to tell you guys. I forgot to tell you, Peter and Brianna. You're going to dig this. I'm going to write it down in the chat board for okay. everybody who's here. I have, a new, I have another movie that's out on Amazon Prime. Oh. And you can rent it. You can watch it for free if you watch the ad. Uh, and then you can buy it for like nine ninety nine, or you can rent it for two ninety nine. It's my first movie that I ever did, and I have one of the lead roles. It's called Dreams Don't Die on Amazon Prime. Oh wow! So uh, now you said this is your first. This is something you directed, or no? No, this is my first. Uh, my first movie that I did for an ABC movie of the week. It was a big movie about graffiti and drugs. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'd it's love to check that out. Movie. It's a cult movie. Like, um, like a lot of graffiti artists that are my age, they're, they're like digging it. They loved it. They, it was a big write-up. Um, it stars me, a guy named Ike Eisenman, who was in the movie Return from Witch Mountain. He's the kid in Gunsmoke, too, the uh-huh. son. He, Trini Alvarado and Paul Winfield, the great Paul Winfield, and James Broderick, who plays my mafia boss. That's Matthew Broderick's dad. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, uh, me and Matthew Broderick used to hang out years ago when, while we were filming the movie. And he had done, and he invited me to see Torch, Torch Song Trilogy, the Harvey Feinstein. Um, um, play that he starred in and made famous on Broadway. 
God, oh. that breaks my okay. oh, That one just so, makes so my ball, eyeballs. So yeah, you, you literally meant this was your first movie. Okay, I got it. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah, um, this is my first movie, yeah. man. And yeah, Christy says more, 1982. So there we go. Yes, 1982. I was 18 years old, and it was my first audition for any movie, and I killed it. And I, I, met, I met Ralph Macchio at the audition, Matthew Broderick's audition for it. Like, a lot of people auditioned for it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's when I met Ralph. I met Ralph before I met him at the auditions. Yeah, that's a trivia question I should have given you There you go, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess we both kind of forgot. Chrissy's saying that uh, it was in our interview. So. (laughs) Well, you may have talked about it, but was it available on Amazon at the time? Oh, not sure. So, that that means maybe that's, yeah. found this out somebody told me and i'm going yeah another check right on <laughs> hey, you know what though that makes me happy because i've been wanting for them to bring back a lot of the old abc afternoon playhouse movies and stuff like that yeah an entire generation yeah. two no. generations have never seen them and they're so yeah. good no no listen i starred with scott bale on an american playhouse theater uh theater movie too and hopefully that'll be picked up like all these old things like listen i've done so many tv shows and they like they're starting to show everywhere it's crazy it's crazy wow yeah so that makes me happy and actors they love it because you know sometimes like me i retired from acting right i i i receive a pension from sag i mean i could act whenever i want still but you know that's not what i do right but but it's good for us actors to continue getting paid. So all this beautiful content, right. this old content comes up, and it's a great thing for actors. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I will definitely check that out for sure. Yeah, me yeah. too. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody does. It's a pretty good movie. All right. So now that we've all got a new movie to watch this evening, uh, we've got 13 survivors left. We are moving on to question eight. And this is me. Yes? Yes? Can I count? Uh, no, I'm nine. You're eight. Go, Peter. Me, me. Okay. All right. Question eight. Rosa pulls no punches when she tells Johnny why they left Ecuador, but she says it in Spanish. What is the rough English translation? A, because they couldn't get jobs there. B, because they wanted Miguel to be an American citizen. C, because they didn't like it there anymore and wanted a change. Or D, because she, Carmen, fell in love with a piece of shit. <laughs> Should be fairly <laughs> obvious which one's the correct answer, yes? Especially if you know Yaya. If you know Yaya and you really only have to catch the one word, the last word that comes out of her mouth is mierda. Carmen yep. fell in love with a piece of shit. There we go. <laughs> to which Carmen goes, now Mama! <laughs> Yeah, hey, you could have wrote these uh, this question in Spanish. I would have read it, man. I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> I, man, I'm, I'm Spanish. I'm bilingual. <laughs> I, 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 I make no... Po- I mean, I, I probably should speak at, you know, something <laughs> other than English, but I don't. I've tried. I fail at it miserably. I sat with my headphones on for an, like 15 minutes trying to figure out exactly what words she's saying. And I got poor K, which is because. So I got that far. And then she said amor, which is love. And then it was something, something mierda. And so I, I, I got the general gist of it. But like the subtitles yeah. don't even attempt to put up what she's saying. Like even the Spanish <laughs> subtitles don't put up what she's actually saying. Probably because. Right, right. People who need Spanish subtitles would just understand her and wouldn't need it to, <laughs> to say what she's saying. Um, but yeah, Carmen fell in love with a real piece of shit. Um, Rosa doesn't like Miguel's dad, obviously. And 13 people knew that. All right. So yeah, everybody got that one. 100% voted for Carmen uh. falling in love with a piece of shit. <laughs> Those people know how to speak Spanish, right on. Right, or they just know Rosa, and and just uh, and I'm just looking over the leaderboard, and I think we have four previous champions uh, still in here: uh, Mike P, Cobra Kate, Jackie, and M Tizzle. Yes, 
Am I missing anyone? I think that's it, right? No, but you know what? I will say, Paul, you are still hanging in there. You are on question nine, my dude. You made it. Oh, yeah. He, he does usually get knocked out a little early. On question three. And then <laughs> last week, the simple, simple question I picked was, what color does Daniel paint the house? And then he goes, but I'm colorblind. All right. What? <laughs> <laughs> But he guessed, and he was right, so it worked out okay. See, even I try to make hey, it easy, ask, and things happen. Let me ask you something. If people like are out and on the sidelines, do they bail on us? Please don't bail on us. Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, um, according to the stats I'm looking at, we started with 49 viewers, and we still have 43. Nice. So a nice. few have. Most 43. of them have said, you know, good night on their way out. They can still play. Nice. They're not on the leaderboard anymore, right. but they can keep answering. All right, let's go. Let's go. All right. Question number nine. This let's one is. For my Naked Bacon t-shirt. Let's get a winner. Right? That's right. Everybody wants one. I want one of those. So do I, yeah. Question nine. When Chosen picks Mr. Miyagi and Daniel up from the airport, where does he take them? To a warehouse? To Tomi Village? To Kadena Air Base? Or to Naha? I bet you some people are going to be like, I need to rewatch Karate Kid Part 2. They they should absolutely, no one who has ever seen the movie should miss this question. But and just, just to throw it out there on one of my other podcasts, uh, Original Remake, we did review Part 2. My co-host, not so high on this movie. Your co-host is... <clears throat> he... Yeah, he didn't he didn't grow up with these movies. I mean, he saw the original Karate Kid exactly like three times, two, twice for the podcast. I'm going to hold my tongue because I am <laughs> going to be respectful. But well, thank you. <laughs> um, bitches be crazy. OK, answer is a warehouse. That's right. That's where we uh, also see Sato. Yes. For the first time. We don't know where the warehouse is. We assume it's somewhere on the dock because there's dock workers and stuff outside. But. Yep, he takes him to a warehouse. And yeah. still, 13. Everyone knew that one. See? And you know what's cool? You know what's cool? That John Avelson put the ending of the first movie, just like he did with Rocky, in the second movie, right? And what right. was cool about that is that I appear at the end again, right? So, uh -huh. so we pay for that. And it's like a nice check every time it plays. <laughs> so thank you, John. <laughs> that's that is as actually very very cool and then um for the karate kid part three he went so far as to put the five original cobra's names in the credits even though they are not in one single solitary new scene in that film he left wow. them in the credits just for the flashback scenes at the beginning wow yeah i've always thought that was really cool what a cool tag again where was my credit <laughs> You may not be in the flashbacks on Karate Kid 3. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember if you're in the flashbacks on the third one or not. Probably not. No, I don't remember. All right, moving on to question 10. And we're going to pretend Peter didn't spoil this one already, okay? <laughs> but this is for you, Izzy. Okay, question 10. As jokingly implied in Season 2, Episode 7, and further jokingly confirmed by Hayden Schlossberg, what can we assume Freddie Fernandez does for a living? Answers. Hey. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, a. Manages the South Sea apartment. B. Sells insurance. C. Sells reusable eco-friendly straws, and B, oh, the meat packing company. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All pretty good. <laughs> and hey, as an actor, I got thing. <laughs> and uh, for anybody that's in our group, I did recently, I, I think it was just last week, actually, uh, I bumped up the live stream. Uh, Izzy joined me on our Facebook group, and Izzy, you actually... Uh, kind of threw out a uh, an idea of what Freddie Fernandez could have been doing uh, if it wasn't the, the the meat packing company. Yeah, well, listen, um, this was a surprise. I didn't notice this, and uh, 
Peter told me today. And I was like, what? Get out. But what I suggested is that I'm, I'm having a hard time getting work. And Ralph, I mean, excuse me, Daniel son, <laughs> offers me a job. Offers me a job at the at one of his car dealerships, right? And like, I'm a horrible salesman, man, and he doesn't have the heart to tell me, like, you, you're you're gone, buddy. I can't keep you here. You suck as a salesman, you know. <laughs> like that's like really sad, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, he doesn't get on Daniel San's uh, Daniel San's side again. You know what I mean? He doesn't oh. get on his good side. I, you know what I mean? I think that would actually uh, actually work with what we saw in season two because he loses, you know, a, at least a couple employees. So there's definitely some openings. Right. Hey, guys, if you want to see me in season four, you know what I'm saying? I'm here. I'm ready. There we go. Tell him. I had a petition. There we go. <laughs> right now, as far as we know, Freddie Fernandez owns a meatpacking company. And sells frozen London broil. And occasionally lets nice. Daniel train teenagers in his freezer for no particular reason. <laughs> Freddie's got some cash, man. Freddie's got some cash. On. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's terrible at uh, selling cars, because he's, he's, he already owns a successful business here. <laughs> right. He's got no car selling skills. <laughs> yeah, no, no. This is what happens with that, right? So Freddie's meatpacking company... Some some guys start getting COVID and like his business goes oh, no. down. <laughs> and then and then and then he's and then he works at the car dealership. <laughs> oh no, that would be oh, a man. little bit too relevant, I think. Oh wow, that would take the whole four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm uh, just kidding, guys. Just... Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to see Freddie trying to sell cars. I think that would be hilarious. Me too. Oh, I yeah. second that. Yeah. Okay, so one person thought that Freddie manages the South Seas apartments. So we did lose one person on that. Um, everyone else knew that, of course, he owns a meatpacking company where he it, lets Daniel yeah. train teenagers for no particular reason. If he uh, if he did manage... No, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just promoting. I was doing it. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, if he, if Freddie was managing the apartment, I, I wonder if he walks by the gate and gets like, you know, those flashbacks or maybe some PTSD from getting hit in the face. No. What? Okay, we'll move it along. It's well, okay. Bad every, joke. No, no, they, he, he, everyone that appears in the show from the first movies has some form of PTSD because of something that Daniel did to them that they have never recovered from. So. Oh yeah, man. Oh, I should have gotten a nose job in that. In that <laughs> <moment>. <laughs> so it's like everyone. Um, when we had, uh, you know, when we had Sean Kanan on, he was talking about, you know, Mike Barnes being baffled by Daniel's kata and uh, Sensei William Christopher Ford. You know, he's got his thing. Um, the Shoji screens don't hit back. Where Dennis is still like wholly traumatized by the little fight that he and Daniel got in. Um, so it's like the entire Cobra Kai universe is just people traumatized by Daniel LaRusso's general existence. <laughs> I think Freddie fits right in. I think That's so right. Too. You'd yeah. be the first, actually. So you should have been the group's founder. Yeah, should have been. <laughs> should have, could have, would have. Would have been an interesting moving angle. On. Yep, moving on to question 11. Oh, we're lagging a little bit. And this is Peter. Okay. Question 11. What film studio did Johnny's stepfather, Sid, run in the 1980s? A, Columbia Pictures, B, Touchstone, C, Lorimar, or D, 20th Century Fox? I'm not even entirely sure one of those existed in the 80s, thinking about it now. I am pretty sure which I know which one you're talking about. Um because the other ones, like, I say those names out loud, and immediately there's a few movies that pop into my head when I think of the logo. Right. Well, Columbia Pictures made The Karate Kid in 1984, so obviously they existed in the 80s. Um, oh, yeah. 20th Century Fox made Star Wars in the 80s, so obviously they existed in the 80s. Touchstone, um, Ventures in Babysitting. Okay, so Touchstone was there <laughs> right at the very end. Laura Moore was television. 
Uh, Laura that Mar did like a lot of the sitcoms and stuff on ABC. Um, trying to think was was Laura Mar like um the Mary Tyler Moore? Yeah, because I don't know franchise and stuff. I think may have been Laura Mar, but um, Touchstone. I was thinking because they were a Disney offshoot, so I was. I, I remembered them right around my senior year of high school, which was 1991. So I couldn't remember if they were late 80s or early 90s. So, but obviously they existed in the 80s. Be if they made Adventures in Babysitting. So, all good. All right. And ah, nine survivors now. All right, we're getting down to single digits. We are getting down to single digits. So we're going to go ahead and list. We don't have a top ten to list because we skipped past ten, but we'll do the nine. We've got Charles C., Mike P. in the house. We've got Kate, Jim, Brony, Jackie. Didn't Jackie win? Jackie was, uh, yes. Yes, yes she did. So we Two had, we had, ago? yeah, we had, we had more than uh, three. We had four uh, former champions in there at one point. Uh, M. Tizzle, which is, excuse me, Michael, Helen. Yep. Lisa and Paul Karate Papa has made the top nine. Woo! There you go. Karate Papa, I love that name, Karate Papa. I love it. Oh, he's awesome. He is. He's fantastic. Karate Papa. <laughs> I'm sure that's how he pronounces it too. <laughs> Possibly. All right. Question twelve again for Izzy. Okay, question 12. Freddie brought four of the friends with him to the beach party that night. What are their names? A, Bobby, Tommy, Jimmy, and Dutch. B, Chucky, Billy, Chris, and Alan. C, Mike, Dennis, Snake, and Terry. Or D, Zach, A.C., Samuel, and Richard. Hopefully the three incorrect answers all stand out like sore thumbs. One of them in particular, for sure. Right. <laughs> you know what, guys? I'm I'm dying I'm dying to find out the answer. I can't wait for the answer. Oh really? <laughs> you don't? I don't. I, they never told you their 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 characters' names. Uh, I don't have the script anymore. So oh. <laughs> well, Bobby- I mean, I could call all of them. And say you know. What's up, guys? What was your name in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would take a little bit of time. That would take a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, Bobby, Tommy, Jimmy, and Dutch, obviously the OG Cobras. Mike, Dennis, Snake, and Terry, the four bad guys from The Karate Kid Part 3. Zach, AC, Samuel, and Richard, the four male characters from Saved by the Bell. Yeah, I had, a, I had for a second. I had to think about Richard because the first three are the teenagers, and obviously Richard, Richard Mr. Belding, Belding the principal. was the only one left. It's like there aren't four guys. There aren't four I know. kids. What do oh, I do? So I just threw Mr. Belding in there. You, but you know what? Yeah, my my business partner in, in in astrology is Frankie Avalon Jr. and I think he played Chucky. I believe yeah. so. I've got the I've got the book. Yeah. Um. I got to call Frankie tonight and say, yo, were you Chucky? <laughs> <laughs> we'll specify which Chucky, though, because, you know, there's the redheaded Chucky, too. Oh, oh, damn, you know. God, I got to call Frank. Okay. Um, that's the answer. Yep, that's Chucky, the answer. Billy, Chris. Chucky, Billy, Chris, and How many survivors? How many survivors? Um... Nine. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, hopefully still nine. On one. <laughs> wow. Oh, they did process of elimination. Smart right. people here. That's right. right. That one, that one I made fairly obvious. I wanted to get it in there because it is a trivia question, but, you know. Could have been uh, question three. Could have been. Could have been. All right. Back to oh, you. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, question 13. What does Daniel ask Nestor for when, uh, for when, wait. For when, for? what does he ask him for when first, when he first or when first, it, it, when first he walks. You could put hmm. the first anywhere you want. I wrote it funny. Okay. I'll just read it as is. Okay. What does Daniel ask Nestor for when first he walks into the mini mart in season one, episode five, a red spray paint, B Coors banquet, 
C, a pack of gum, or D, a bag of Cheetos? Basically just what does he ask Nestor for? Yes. When he walks in. And I was trying to make it sound all fancy. I don't know why. Susan knows this one. I wonder if uh, Lynn was uh, walking around the aisles at the time of the filming. I don't know if Nestor lets Lynn in the store. I mean, whether he lets her or not, I'm sure she'll sneak in and, you know, hustle some coin inside the mart. It's her mart, after all. It's her corner and everything, yep. Yeah. Uh, So Daniel asks for red spray paint for a little art project on a big canvas right on Ventura Boulevard. Um, He ends up paying for Coors Banquet because he buys Johnny's beer because he's just that big of a dick in that episode. Uh, He does buy a pack of gum, and there's Cheetos sitting on the counter next to him, which was the only reason the Cheetos ended up as an answer. (laughs) Yep, it's one of my moments where I really shook my head at Daniel. Ah, so did I. And maybe shook my fist at the screen. Uh, Brianna, I'm going to have to get my stepdaughter, who's an English major, to help you with your sentence writing for the next (laughs) (laughs) I know. She's going to graduate from Autumn University next year. I'm so proud of her. That's I had to awesome. throw that out. That's awesome. Congratulations to you and to her. <laughs> um, I, I actually, I, when I went back to add the word first, I just put it in the wrong place. But, you know, make it all sound fancy, right? Yeah, it was too uh, fancy. I couldn't say some, it. It's very Shakespearean here on the message board. <laughs> right. I, I think first so, yeah. he walked into the mini mart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was nice. That was Mike. Good one, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Fordham in the Bronx. Yes, Fordham in the Bronx, Michael. All right, question 14. Tamlin Tamita has had a long and steady career since appearing as Kumiko in The Karate Kid Part 2. She is currently part of the Star Trek franchise, playing Commodore O on what series? Is she on Enterprise, Voyager, Picard, or Deep Space Nine? I did not know her character name from this show. Uh, I don't know why there's no theories how she might be related to Nathaniel O. <laughs> Probably because O is not necessarily an uncommon name. I'm guessing. I, yeah, I don't. I don't hear it very much. And she's a fictional character, and he's a real person. I know, but you know people out there in the fandom. That's true. That's very true. Yeah, very true. <laughs> and we've got a we've got a, a question about that coming up here shortly. But she is ah. on. Picard. Um, I guess there were uh, scenes, screenshots. I haven't watched it, but I've seen like screenshots of her standing. Um, Starfleet has um, like a big office complex or whatever Starfleet would have in Okinawa. And they did a whole big, you know, two or three episode arc of Commodore O in Okinawa. Interesting. So that is what Tamlin Tamita is up to right now. Oh, we have a gentleman here, Leb D, says that she's a Romulan. Oh. A Romulan, is that is that what you buy and you, you put hot water and you eat? I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes you could put it in the microwave for a few minutes, too, if you don't have a hot water. <laughs> now, you do know, though, that Romulans and Vulcans neither let their food touch, Right. Did uh-huh. not. I, and the reason I know that is because I don't either, and my dad used to call me a Romulan because he was interesting. Um, like if I'm eating and my corn juice runs into my mashed potatoes, I won't eat either of them. I'll still eat it, but After I eat one item either. at a time. What I'm is he? Sorry, I, I said actor survive on Romulan. Uh, <laughs> college students do too. I ate, a, I ate a lot of that and bologna. I love my ramen noodles. I love it. My daughter loves it. It's cheap, fast, and 99 cents a pack. Awesome. Right. You can't really beat that. <laughs> All right. We've got seven people still in. Charles, Mike P., Jim Brony, Jackie, M. Tizzle, Lisa, and Papa. Hanging so that in means there. Three former champs hoping to maybe make it number two. Yep, yeah, maybe in the streak. And yeah, question we'll 15, back to Izzy. Okay. 
Uh, I'm I'm saying I'm saying bye, Lindsay. She has an uh, eight year old. Oh yes. Good night, Lindsay. For me, so I'm, bye. Yes, bye, Lindsay. Say hello to your eight year old for me. Okay, here we go. Yes. Question fifteen mentioned only once in passing by Creed, but later apparently com- confirmed by John Hurwitz. What is Tori's last name? A, sorry, Schwarber, <laughs> B, Silver, C, Barnes, and D, Nichols. See, I told you, Peter. Uh-huh. I told and you. I hope everyone gets this one right. I do, too. I absolutely hope everyone gets this right, because I'm going to judge very harshly anyone who picks the first three. And and I might I might push for Brianna to uh, hit the crane kick to the face, even if we get one. Right? <laughs> absolutely no hey, one <laughs> should pick any of those first three. No one. That's right. Hey, Brianna, can I ask you something? Are you in Chicago? Are you a Cubs fan? Um. I am in Illinois. I am not in Chicago. I am in central Illinois, which makes me a Cardinals fan. Oh. Oh, yeah. Those are the rivals. Because, no, Schwarber. You had Schwarber in here. So. Um, actually, my, my best friend, Carrie, who's one of the moderators, she is from Chicago. She is a, a uh, Cubs fan. Um, every single time Schwarber's name has shown up as trending in Illinois for the last seven days, my brain immediately has gone, it's not Schwarber! <laughs> oh, uh, also, like uh, is he Sh- Schwarber is uh, Allie's um, married name now on the show. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where gotcha. Schwarber came from. Silver is Terry gotcha. Silver. Barnes is Mike Barnes. None of the above. Her name is Nichols. And thankfully, I do not have to lose respect for any of the seven of you because you all got it right. Yay! All right. Wow, the seven, the seven, lucky seven. All right. This is this is actually a substantial number of players this many questions in. Yeah, I like it. Yep. All right, and this one is to you, Peter. Question 16. All right, question 16. Daniel was given a title at the end of the Karate Kid Part 3 that he received for being the first to win two years in a row. What was it? A, Ultimate Champion, B, Grand Champion, C, Lifetime Champion, or D, Legacy Champion? I do know the answer to this because my very first uh, coverage of the Karate Kid Part 3 is something that just kind of stood out that I'd never caught before. Right. And uh, the first time we did trivia, a, a modified version of it, was a few questions that you and Tom asked the big three, and they did not know the answer to this one. Ah, Okay, I, I kind of I, I think that's why I remember that. Yeah, I rem- I definitely remember it because it made me very happy. Daniel grand is champion. the grand champion, and the first to ever you win two years in a row. And so far as we know, he's still the only person who has ever been given that title. They have not said we would have and to perhaps, ask Ron. Perhaps that's why uh, Daniel has his own banner and not another two-time uh, previous champion. We're not going How to throw those grapes. We have? Oh, okay. <laughs> How many survivors do we have now? Five. Whoa, all we did right. We lose oh, two cool. on that one, so we are to the top five. Top five, top five. Top five, Three top of those five. are previous champions. Oh, so, oh, you. Papa. We lost Papa. Oh, no. Ah, uh, Papa. Karate Papa, I'm sorry. Better luck next time. You know, mm. this... This is really exciting for me because although I want our uh, streak to continue of a new champion every week, we still have three former champions, too. That could be the very first two-time champ. This is very true, and there's actually relevant discussion going on right now because Carrie said she thought that Johnny won two years in a row. No, Johnny had won twice, but... He was the defending champion from 83 and 84, and he didn't win in 84. So at some point, he had to have won in 83 and 81. Um, How he did that, we have no idea. But he could not have done it back-to-back because Daniel was the first. Mm -hmm. So got to make those cannons match, man. Yep. 
That's why I'm going to go with, that's why Daniel's the only one with the banner. Right. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Question 17. Um, where did Mr. Miyagi and Yukie have their first date? Was it A, at the cannery? B, at a dance in Naha? C, on the beach near Tomi Village? Or D, at King Shohashi's castle? Where did Mr. Miyagi and Yukie have their first date? I, you know, you should have put Benihana in dance. <laughs> I don't know if they have a Benihana in Okinawa, or if they did in 1925 anyway. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> it, it could have been a uh, okay. the original Benihana, you know, that goes off to uh, spawn the chain. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Their first date was at the cannery over a load of fresh mackerel, as he tells Daniel. And... We uh -huh. have lost another. We are down to four. We have Charles and the three returning champions. This oh is getting intense. Oh, my God. It this is getting is, really intense. This and is getting intense. If, I mean, I have faith in everybody, but how nerve-wracking is it going to be if Charles is the next one to go? Then we got the three former champs. It's This is nuts. Oh, man. This is the first. This is this is absolutely wow. a first. Hang on. Grand champions. Yeah, we would have a grand champion in this one. You're right. All right. Question 18. This is back to Izzy. Okay. Question 18 for the top four. Who runs the Reseda Flat Mini Mart? A. Lyle. B. Lynn. C. Nestor. Or D. Armand. I wonder if Susan knows this one. Oh, Susan better know this one. Well, Susan probably knows, but I wonder if Lynn knows. I mean, Lynn would probably say her, herself. I don't know. Yeah, Lynn would probably say she runs the joint because it's her mark, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn X Lyle. Yes. Uh-oh. We ship Charles Lynn and Lyle. Just, Charles oh, is out. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, we put all that pressure on him. Oh, oh no. And it is Nestor. Nestor runs the mini mart. Armand owns it. Nestor runs it. So, uh, somebody put me. I panic. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, well, uh, Lynn is a meth head. So, yeah, that that's that's meth is like a is like a thing in our fandom. It's uh -oh. kind of oh, uh, Mike, Mike just P is out too. too. Oh. Here we go. Oh, my God. We're down to Jackie and, wow. and M. Tizzle. Here we go. That's right. Okay. All right. Hold on. Who what? was who was last week's? Wasn't it uh, Jackie last week's yes, winner, too? Yes, Jackie may actually be a back-to-back -back champion, guys. Oh, my God. This is crazy. I don't know what to do. <laughs> she might do it. She might pull it out. All right. Question oh. 19. Here we go, Peter. Good luck to the both of you. Good luck to the both of you. Here no we go. No pressure. But here you go. All right. We're rooting. Up to you. Question 19. Mike, Dennis, and Snake leave the bonsai shop in a uh, bit of a hurry, and they nearly get themselves killed. What almost happens? A, they almost hit another car. B, they almost run into a building. C, they almost roll their car. Or D, they almost get hit by a train. Wait, Amy says Hayden had declared Jackie a two-time winner anyway. That oh, might he have been did, because he asked if she had won before. That's right. So he did it on accident. Did Hayden, or did he? Did Hayden or did he? Actually, oh, ma don't. <laughs> don't. We are not playing into Hayden's delusions of being a god any further. Or is Jackie Hayden? We're just, is Jackie. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> With the conspiracy theories. They almost get hit by a train. Okay. Um, I put that question in there actually the week that uh, Sensei was on and then kept it for Sean, obviously, because I wanted to ask them both. You look at that screenshot. They are both very obviously in that car as it's doing donuts. That is not Jonathan Avelton driving. And I right. just kind of wanted to ask them what that felt like to be doing all those crazy donuts in front and you know being on film because that to me looks incredibly fun. If somebody has his contact... Uh... Hook me up. Would love to speak with him. Oh, with Jonathan Avelson? Yes. Yeah, that would be cool. Okay. Or or were you talking about the stuntman? 
Oh, no, I was talking about <laughs> wanting to ask Sean and, and okay, Sean. Sensei William both what it felt like to be driving in the car with the stuntman. Oh, okay. Because I he was going crazy. He was just like yeah, all yeah, over yeah. the place. Um, but we still have two survivors. Still got the top two. Wow. They, wow. Wow, you can't hit these guys with a train. Oh, man. They nope. just keep going. <laughs> nope. They knew that one. And everyone's uh, uh, kind of calling for Jackie, too. I think she's really focused in here. Actually, right. I, I think uh, Mike, too. They I, really I, want my t shirt. They, they do. Really do. It's all about the t shirts. Yeah. Question so 20. Bad, yes. Fill in the blank to complete this quote. But you know the problem with those blank deals? There are no guarantees. Is it informal, verbal, handshake, or rental? And I know it's not a Johnny quote, but he's so freaking pretty standing in that doorway <laughs> that I had to use that screenshot. All right. And the answer is handshake. And I actually have. But you know the problem with those handshake deals. Handshake. There are no guarantees. Oh, there's a clip. Yeah, there, there was supposed to be one of those for you, but that's why I said Premiere died, so I couldn't get it on there. Oh, oh, no. I work with Adobe, After Effects, and all that, I know. Oh, God, yeah. Pre don't update to Premiere 2014, apparently. It's awful. Uh, yeah. Handshake deals. Problem with those oh. handshake deals. And they both got it! All right, oh, my goodness. Here we go, we are Whoa. crossing oh. question 20. <laughs> Gonna be here in the night where the mosquitoes are gonna like be really saying, "Yo, he's still here. Let's get him." <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're crossing question twenty for I think maybe only the third or fourth time. So here we go, back to Izzy for question twenty-one. Okay, let me see what we get. Let's see what what I got. Oh, wait, there's, it's blank. Yeah, oh, it's, here we go. it's lagging a little bit. Okay, this is question twenty-one. All right. Daniel and Allie decide to go outside at the Halloween dance, but their plans are ruined by a kid dressed as what? A, a chicken. B, skeleton. C, pirate. Or D, Roman god. Izzy, what do you think uh, Freddy is in this scene? I forgot what I was, man. <laughs> Were you there? I, I was in it, and, and I was stupid because I kept hiding behind the damn route. You know, like, I didn't put myself in the scene. You know, like, the cameras are going, and I'm, like, just having fun. <laughs> oh, no. Stupid, as opposed to being aware of the camera, man. We had shot some other scenes. Of course, they cut out because of time or whatever. But, man, when, I saw, when we saw the scene... Like, I only saw a couple of Freddy's friends. But I, I don't even remember what I was. I was probably some, I don't know, like, uh, was I Zorro? Was I, uh, no, there was a Zorro there. Wait, I forgot. I don't know. A farmer? I don't know. I, I, I feel I like Fred, Freddy Fernandez might, might uh, be a, a breakdancer, too. So he's probably breakdancing in something that he can move in. <laughs> or skateboarding. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I forgot. I swear, that's a trivia question. I would have to find somebody to answer. Right. Yeah. Oh, a chicken. A chicken, played by Mike Lookinland's little brother. Right? Who's uh, Mike Lookinland you know played you Bobby Brady, the youngest of the Brady kids on the Brady Bunch. That was his little brother that played the chicken. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> I'd be lost. I'd be out in this game already. <laughs> I said, well, you didn't need to? to know that part. Just that the kid was dressed like a chicken. And it's kind of, you know, kind of hard to forget. He's and using the legs. Yeah. neither Jackie nor Mike forgot. So, and I do, I do, I do remember one of Freddy's friends, the, the Roman God, um, was actually one of Freddy's friends. Uh, it was the blonde. Ah. Oh, I don't know where I was. We were having fun that day. There were so many people there. Yeah, I bet. That's the all music. I, I remember that Chad took me home. 
after that, man. And he took me through Laurel Canyon, man, and his Porsche, man. And I was like, yo, man, oh, wow. slow down, bro. <laughs> Are you surprised he's a race down. car driver? No, I knew I knew Chad from before. I did a movie with him called Hadley's Rebellion. So me and Chad already worked together, man. And uh, and so like one night he goes, "Come on, in, let's go, let's go home, man. I'll take you home, right?" I forgot somebody gave me a lift, and we went through Laurel Canyon. And the dude, I was so scared, bro. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I say you're a real race car driver, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Chad is a cool cat, man. Oh, I bet. I mean, yeah, yeah, dude. He had stories, so great stories. Uh, he was just oh, a nice man. guy, man. I he doesn't do anything anymore. I don't see him doing. I saw him on like some car show or something or some. Um, man, I saw him. I said, "Oh shit, Chad, where where did he disappear to?" Yeah, no, he just you know? he races and, and rebuilds, and he's got his car company out yeah. there, and that's all he does. Yeah, that's his, that's his thing. That's Chad's thing. I would love to see him again, but I, I knew Chad, and me, Chad, and then, um, God, I forgot his name. Oh, we were close at one time, and, um, okay, there's an actor that's my, my friend, uh, my friend, um, Okay, my friend is Dean Devlin, okay? He wrote Independence Day. He's a big producer. And Dean's best friend is, oh, what's his name? Oh, my God. My, I, I'm having a brain fart. I'm sorry. but um, Is he an but, actor but or is he another bodyguard, writer? Bodyguard, huh? Say, because Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich wrote Stargate together. Yeah, yeah. No, not Roland. No, no. Uh, my friend, uh, Dean's best friend was the guy that played my bodyguard, the, the bodyguard for the little kid. And he was also in, he was also, he played a captain in, um, in the movie, uh, star, um, the star movie, uh, 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 Independence Day. But, but anyway, me, him and Chad worked together on this movie with Griffin O'Neill a long time ago. So that's, that's how I knew Chad. I knew Chad already going into the production. Interesting. Yeah. Was it my bodyguard, um, uh, Baldwin, Adam Baldwin? Adam, Adam. That's right. Me, Adam, and Chad worked on this other movie years ago. ago. Yeah, Adam. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah well, a Adam was in uh, uh, Firefly? Yeah. Played Jane. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. A Adam and I, we, we used to be close years ago. I haven't seen him in ages, man. And uh, I was at a wedding uh, last year with Dean's uh, wife. Me and my girlfriend went to a wedding, and Dean's wife was the best friend of the girl that got married. So that was cool. I got to hang out with, I think her name is Lisa. Um, so that, that was cool. And Dean couldn't make it because he was working on LBJ. Oh, yeah, yeah. That just came out. Yeah, but me and Dean talked once in a while on, on, on the chat thing. You know, we were really close at one time. I, I, I always told him he should have put me in one of his movies, man. I was, I was mad about that. I would have paid to see you be Daniel Jackson. Uh, me and Dean, he played my little brother on Hill Street Blues. That's how far back me and Dean go. And this was like 30, this was before the Karate Kid. Wow. This was Hill Street Blues. Yeah. We did I, three episodes. I, I would love to see your Daniel Jackson, actually. That would be fascinating. <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> what, my Daniel Jackson? Yeah. If he, if he cast you instead of Spader in Stargate. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Starkey, that was like his third big movie. Yeah. His first one was that one with Dolph Lundgren, that, that weird, really, and he goes, Is, I'm working on this movie thing, and I didn't pay much attention. And then when uh, Independence Day came out, I was like trying to find him, man. I was like, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> and then I talked to him, and I said, please, let me get stepped on by Godzilla, bro. Come on, put me in a little scene. <laughs> he never called me back. Oh, that's that that uh, role must have been taken. There were a few people that got <laughs> yeah. stepped on by Godzilla. Yeah. 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 One of the happy ones. All right. Well, I think that um, we've had question 22 up on the screen long enough now that um, Mike and and Jackie, even if they didn't know the answer, could have gone and looked it up a thousand times by now. But Peter. Ask the question so we can... <laughs> question. Oh, no, no I hit the button. I hit the button too soon. I shouldn't have opened the, the question. 
Question 22. Kreese has an autographed flip cola ad hanging on the wall behind his bed at the shelter. Who signed it? A. Susie Johnson. B. Sarah Jackson. C. Donna Johnson. Or D. Doris Jacobs. This could be the one. We don't know. We'll see. It could be. I wish I could find um, the actual image that, like, is verifiable proof of this answer. I have that. Uh, yeah, you're the, but that's what I was going to say. You're the one who has that. So. Ah, yes. Um, it is Susie Johnson. Specifically, it says, Dear Johnny, thanks for the French fries. Love, Susie Johnson. Zero context. Wow. We have no idea what else it says. But I think Jackie... I think Jackie was bluffed. I mean, uh, she was uh, stuck on it, so I don't know. We may have a winner. Do we? Let's find out. Oh, we do not. But what we do have (laughs) is Charles returning from the dead, which means means sudden sudden death death. for Jackie and Mike. Is it this her second? Uh, This is her. did, did Did you win in sudden death last week, Jackie? I mean, um, didn't she go up against um, Drew in the sudden death she also? She did. Okay. Uh, Joe, poor Jack. Not this again. Oh, no. All right. So we're going to switch over to the sudden death window. Here we go. I'm going to switch over to the sudden death control panel. Here we I'm go. I'm glad this has happened a few times so that way you know what to do. Right. I'm going to take off that bar. There you go. There is your code. Only Jackie and Mike. That's it. No one else. Two players. One question. Fastest to the right answer is the winner. So don't click so fast that you lock yourself out. But at the same time, um, don't second guess yourself so much that you, you know, delay your answer. So. All right, I'm about to have a heart attack here. In. I can't even imagine how they're feeling. Right? <laughs> this is great. Okay. All right. I've got both of them in. For the t-shirt. This is for the t-shirt. Don't get nervous now. Right? Not only the t-shirt, but a two-time champion. Right? Yeah. On week 12. Pot- yeah, we're, we're definitely going to have a two-week champion. One has the potential of being a back-to-back two-time champion. No matter yeah. what happens, guys, you're making history here, but no pressure whatsoever. And you're going to get that awesome T-shirt of <laughs> pigs doing highly inappropriate things that is hilarious to look at. <laughs> yes. So, all right. I will not push the button until you both tell me you are ready. So, I need to see in the chat. From Jackie and from Mike. Give me a one if you're ready. Just the number one. It's right there on the keyboard. Um, have we lost them both? No, okay. Jackie's, right. Jackie typed she's okay. ready. Jackie's typed she's ready. Okay, so now we just need Mike. Is Mike even in the chat? Yes. Yes, there he is. Okay, there he is. Okay. He's All in. right. Okay, everybody's ready. And pushing the button. Remember, do not wait for our voice. Um, who's asking the question? Uh, you. Me. Okay. Do not wait for my voice. As soon as you see it on the screen of your, you know, whatever device you're playing the game on, as soon as you realize that it's counting down, you go. Do not wait for my voice. All right. Here we go. I'm going to hit the button in three, two, one. All right, now waiting for it to catch up. And the question is, what year was the Karate Kid Part 3 released? Was it 1984, 1989, 1986, or a cream puff? Okay, explain (laughs) one of those answers. (laughs) Um, I actually wrote this so many weeks ago that I don't remember but I think it was just like something ridiculous to throw in because those are the release dates of the three movies. I was probably thinking about putting 1994 there and then decided against it. But I oh, honestly Jack don't remember. Hit the wrong button. She hit the wrong thing. I swear I know she wrote. 
Oh no. So that means that we do have a winner. We do have a two time champion. It That's is Mike. Sir. All right. There it you is go. Mike. Good job. <laughs> and he do it. So, quick. okay. So, let, let Matt, uh, uh, he, you guys got to give me Michael's size so I can send him and his address. Congratulations, Matizzle. Yes. That's right. Matizzle. Congrats, indeed. Matizzle. So, Michael, uh, yep. Yeah, just, right, just uh, reach out to me and give me your information, uh, address, and size. Because, uh, yeah, um, you know, we want to make sure it fits you. Now, uh, is he, are you signing this or, or do you, uh, is it up to him? Or, hey, um, whatever Michael wants. He, okay. You know, he can talk right on it to Michael. You know, what was that karate? I usually write <laughs> Israel, a.k.a. Freddie Fernandez, whatever quotes he wants. Or if he just wants it plain and clean, it's up to him, man. All right. I won't be offended. All right, Michael. So, yep, uh, relay that information to me. I'll pass that on to Izzy. Um, congrats again to you, and thanks again for everybody for taking uh, time out of your afternoon, evenings, whatever time it is for you around the world, uh, and spending it with us. Uh, and again, Izzy, thank you, uh, our special guest host here, for tuning in and sharing your amazing stories like the uncle you are to us. Oh, my gosh. So many amazing stories. I love it. Thank you I'll so much, Izzy. You. Love you guys, man. Let's keep this beautiful relationship. Peace. Love yes. to all the fans, man. Please be safe. Uh, wear your mask. Uh, just, you know, just help, you know, each other in these times of crisis. That's a nice thing to do. That's what Mr. Miyagi would say. Yes. And, uh, you know, a love to love to all. Thank you yes. so much for having me on the show. I really yeah. appreciate it. Now, if anybody is interested in the strategy or the T-shirt, check out uh, Izzy's uh, Etsy uh, page. You can go to Etsy and just search strategy, uh, but it is pretty simple. Etsy.com back, backslash shop backslash strategy um, to find uh, some of his merch there. Uh, but Izzy, if if you welcome the interaction, what what are some of your social medias people can follow? Oh. I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's called Strawgy. Uh, you know, my website is down right now, the www.strawgy.com, but that will be up soon. But you can buy, you know, my T-shirt and the Strawgies on Etsy. Um, uh, and and uh, uh, I'm on Instagram at Strawgy Clip. Okay, Strawgy Clips. Um, I think it is. It's been a while because of the COVID thing. I haven't been focusing too much on it. But it's a cool novelty gift, man. It's uh, reusable straws uh, um, and, and clips. The clips is the main thing. It's the strawgy. And you, you can send me your photos, and I can play, place them on there. Um, it's very inexpensive, five-pack, ten-pack, $10, five-pack, $5. Um, and it's cool. You can put your kids' pictures on there, and they can reuse it over and over. And they're recyclable, uh, reusable. And, and uh, of course, my T-shirts. My teachers, right. I've been send, sending all around the world, Australia, Israel. Um, I sent them to England numerous times, um, um, all over the country. It's just, it, it's starting to grow, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm loving the, uh, the, uh, the people that are hitting the site and giving me great reviews. And it's just, you know, something I do on the side, and, you know, I appreciate your support. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love the strategies, and for those that are still... Uh, you know, you guys haven't seen it. It clips onto the straw that it comes with, so you can put it in your uh, your drink. But also, you can remove the, the 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 clip, the billboard there, and place it on the rim of your your cup or your glass as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, a couple yeah. different ways to use them. Yeah, yeah. I have I have my friend Luis Guzman, the actor, the famous Pachanga, um, that uh, promotes it. He's my investor, my best friend, and so check it out. You'll see photos of him with it, and. Uh, Actually, I'm in Vermont, and I'm going to go to his house in the morning because he lives out here. So I may uh, po uh, uh, take some photos and post it for you guys so you can see me and Louie hanging out. He's my brother. I've known him for 53 years. We grew up in the same building and oh, wow. happens to get into business uh, together. So uh, if you don't know who Louis Guzman is, look him up. You'll definitely recognize him. I mean, he's been in like 140 movies. Yeah, he's in everything, literally. 
Yeah. So uh, yeah. I, I'd be surprised if somebody didn't recognize them. Um, yeah. Now, uh, Brianna, do, do you have something else uh, uh, to promote? I, I want to give a shout out to um, you know our companion friend uh, Sarah, who just had you uh, as a guest on her podcast recently. Uh, yeah, anyone who wants to listen to me babble on about fan fiction for damn near three hours. Um, it's a talking fanfic, Cobra Kai. Um, had a great time. She's a good friend. Um, both of us, you know, it, as happens when you're recording an episode, both of us completely forgot to say all kinds of things we wanted to say. But turned out to be an okay interview, I think. Um, so I really enjoyed it. I, go I really love you. Go listen to that I mean... one. Give her a like and subscribe. You know, I, I've said it. You're my co-host. Uh, you know, I, I love you like a sister, but I was listening to that and just fanboying out because I am too a fan of yours. So oh, uh, for people sh- that <laughs> for people that follow your work, um, I highly uh, encourage them to, them to go check out this episode. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and that's Talking Fanfic uh, Podcast. You know, it's Cobra Kai related. Uh, Karate Kid Universe, really. Um, yes. Uh, for people that write fan fiction. Yes. Um, for me, I am at the tail end of wrapping up uh, my Miyagi video. So I, uh, Brianna gave me a thumbs up on my on my writing. So I just got to record that, and videos soon come? Question mark. So some other things uh, down the pipe for us. So follow us on social media, you guys. Uh, again, we can't thank you guys enough. For spending the time with us, playing trivia, um, and all the champions. And again, congrats, Mike, for being the first two-time champion. Yes, and again, thank you, Izzy, for taking time out of your vacation to spend with us. We love you. That's right. Yep. Loved it. I loved it more than you guys. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <clears throat> I will take it. Okay, all right. Uh, Izzy, stand by as we uh, close up um, the, the game here. Uh, as, as of right now, guys, I... I've spoken with um, uh, somebody for next week, so hopefully we can announce that sooner than later. Uh, but I, I know, oh gosh, who was it? I think, uh, I think it was Kate. Somebody was asking, like, oh, they, you know, she would love to have like uh, Jacob Bertrand as, as guest host. Um, I've never interviewed Jacob, and it's easier to reach out to the ones that we have interviewed before. So uh, just if anybody was curious, like, how do we get our guests? Uh, it's the ones that I've spoken with before. They're they're more likely to to come on. Um, so, but cross our fingers. Maybe one day we'll get Jacob on as an interview. I I, I hope we'll see. Sis so, is asking, uh, what is the YouTube channel again? Which YouTube channel? Oh, Cobra Kai Companion. Companion spelled with a K. Well, we're on the Cobra Kai Companion YouTube channel. We sure are. Did somebody actually asked that. Susan. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I missed who you said it was. Uh, but yes, our uh, channel uh, where we'll be uploading the video. But you know, we'll we'll share it in the in the, in the groups as well. Is that oh, what we're talking about? The, no, it's you know? it's not a YouTube channel, Susan. It's a it's a podcast. Um, oh, if you look uh, on yeah, if you look on if you look on Podbean, um, or if you go back Actually, on my Twitter or even. on the the companion group, it's linked to Podbean and Apple both. Um, there is no, there is no video. This one's just audio. It's just a podcast. Well, if it's okay, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to drop the link in, in, uh, the homeless Lynn group. So yeah. Yeah. If you want us to Susan, we can absolutely do that. It's not like we don't go stomping all over your page, throwing links <laughs> to other stuff we're doing. <laughs> That's right. All right. So Susan gave us the okay. We'll go ahead and do that. So, uh, we'll see you guys all next week. And Izzy, we'll talk to you in just a, in a sec here. All right. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.